It's been called the crown jewel of Central America, a natural paradise where the mountain vistas of the backcountry can be breathtaking. <laughs> where in the primitive settlements of the Mestizos Indians, life carries on as it did a thousand years ago. It's also a place where the old world clashes in sharp contrast with the new. A country of two and a half million people, descendants of Indians, Europeans, and Africans, Panama is a place of contradictions. Along the bustling streets of Panama City, armed guards watch over fashionable shopping districts, just yards away from areas of grinding poverty. They're the home of many, like Charlie Riviera, an unemployed waiter. The minimum wage down here is 94 cents an hour. I mean, put yourself in that position. Who could live with 94 cents an hour? But despite this seemingly overwhelming poverty, Panama ironically has one of the strongest economies in Central America. Without question, this is the lifeline of this country, the Panama Canal. 45 ships from all over the world pass through these locks every day, taking this man-made shortcut between the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. Built by the United States in 1914, the Panama Canal was one of the engineering wonders of the world. Today, it remains a vital link in international commerce. To protect the canal, the United States has long operated a series of military bases in the area. But these, like the canal, will be turned over to the Panamanians in the year 2000. It was on one of these bases that we found the Louisiana National Guard and Travis Diamond from Baton Rouge. It's different from Louisiana. You know, the people are, uh, they're uh, definitely different. You know, it, they're nice. They're very friendly people. Diamond is just one of a contingent of Louisiana Guardsmen in Panama. Their mission to not only repair aging military bases, but to also literally bridge the gap between the people of two cultures. We'll have that story tomorrow. In Panama, I'm Arvin McGraw, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. Last night, we began a special report about some work the Louisiana National Guard is doing in Central America. Now, the Guard is in Panama, partly on a humanitarian mission. Eyewitness News reporter Marvin McGraw, along with cameraman Rod McKee, went to Panama City last week and over the weekend, where they found the men and women of the Louisiana Guard literally building bridges of hope between the people of two cultures. <laughs> a century, the Iglesia del Carmen has stood watch over the streets of Panama City, stood watch over a city that's as diverse as the people who live here. For almost as long, the United States has had a presence here too, a presence that began in the early 1900s with the building of the famed Panama Canal. Today, a massive complex of military bases surround the canal. Bases which, like the canal, will be turned over to the Panamanian government in the year 2000. Not everyone here we talked to was happy about it. If we have to turn it over and that's the agreement that was made, then we just have to suffer those consequences. But you don't agree with it? But I don't agree with it. Alvin Joseph from Baton Rouge is just one of a contingent from the Louisiana National Guard in Panama. A group which includes soldiers like Brad Carter, a history major at Southeastern in Hammond. Today, he's pouring a slab of concrete for a storage building at Fort Kobe. It's not every day you look out and see mountains. So um, that's, that's nice, a whole new different culture. Um, it's just, it's unreal. But not all the work here by the Guard is strictly business. Much of it's humanitarian. In all, there are more than 60 men and women, guardsmen like these from East Baton Rouge Parish who are in Panama, some for more than a month, on this mission of goodwill. In this container are boxes of school supplies donated by students of Shenandoah Elementary School in Baton Rouge. Here we have binders. Over here we have loose leaf paper, folders. Things kids in the States take for granted. But here in this country of grinding poverty, they can make a difference. Gives you a nice feeling when you hand a kid a folder or some loose leaf paper or, or binder or whatever and, um, and their face like that. But the guard's work goes far beyond the city limits. 
and deep into the mountains and jungles of this fascinating country. Tomorrow, that story. In Panama, I'm Marvin McGraw, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. And the school supplies from Shenandoah Elementary will be distributed to the Panamanian school kids later this month. Annie? Well, an LSU student... Did you know that some of your neighbors may be in Panama tonight? That's if they're part of a humanitarian effort that many of our Louisiana National Guards people are actually involved in, including many from the Baton Rouge area. Marvin McGraw and photographer Rod McKee continue our special report, Bridges of Hope. And tonight, they venture into the mountains and jungles of Panama, where the Guard has made life a little easier for the people who live there. To visit the villages of Panama's Mestizos Indians is to take a step back in time. The people in these mountains and jungles live much the same as they did a thousand years ago, pounding grain for their evening meal with an ancient mortar and pestle. Shelter here means thatch huts with no electricity or running water. One of the few connections with the modern world is this 19th century sugarcane press. The liquid is used to make a type of mash whiskey. It is a remote side, isn't it? It was to this remote village of Cerro Mosquito that Major General Ansel Stroud came with an entourage from the Louisiana National Guard to inspect the suspension bridge built by guardsmen just weeks before, a bridge the village chief claims is badly needed. He said uh, villagers built uh, bridges and they were very dangerous to cross on their own. People were actually taken by the bridge uh, into the water and taken downstream. There's nothing they could do. Built of iron and steel cable, the bridge spans the Tobole River and connects Cerro Mosquito with the nearby village of Chichica. In all, the Louisiana National Guard has built or repaired three bridges like this one, bridges which are virtual lifelines to the people who live in the remote jungles in mountains of Panama. Eh, no? When the river's high, there's, even by boats, there's no way of passing, so uh, for the villagers to come over here for either medical reasons or whatnot, food, and this bridge is necessary. It took the guard 12 days to build the bridge. For many, it was a learning, if not emotional, experience. Certainly, I think there's an uh, emotional environment when they can do things for people rather than for government. With the completion of this bridge, the guard's role in Seattle Mosquito is finished. But in the years ahead, these villagers will no doubt make good use of the legacy the men and women from Louisiana left behind. In the jungles of Panama, I'm Arvin McGraw, Channel 2 Eyewitness News. The Louisiana National Guard was also responsible for making critical repairs to do additional bridges in the remote backcountry of Panama. Well, it turned out